Welcome to Piled Bucks Drill Shaft Series. In this series, we'll be covering everything you need to know pertaining to drilled shafts, including tools and equipment, casings, liners, rebar cages, spacers, drilling fluids, and much more. In the first video, we're going to cover site characterization. Before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsor who helped make this video possible, Peer Research. Your solution for deep foundation drill shaft rebar and rebar cage alignment for over 30 years. Now back to the video. Site characterization is the process of defining the subsurface soil and rock units and their physical and engineering properties. For drilled shafts, the information obtained is used for analysis of resistances and load deformation response as well as construction feasibility, cost, and planning. Thorough site characterization makes it possible to design reliable, economical, and constructible drilled shaft foundations that will meet the performance expectations. The site characterization process must be sufficient to define the variability of soil and rock engineering properties. Role of the geotechnical engineer. Implementation of an effective site characterization program requires the direct participation of an experienced geotechnical engineer. The geotechnical engineer must have a thorough understanding of subsurface investigation techniques, foundation design procedures, and drilled shaft construction technology. Geotechnical input is necessary throughout the process from site selection to completion of foundation construction. Drilled shaft design. The information required for design of drilled shafts can be divided into three general categories. Number one, subsurface stratigraphy and groundwater conditions. Number two, index properties and classification of geomaterials. And number three, specific engineering strength and deformation properties. Site characterization program. Investigations for drilled shaft projects may be carried out through a phased exploration program. This may include the following stages. First, data collection. Second, field reconnaissance. And third, detailed site exploration. When properly planned, this type of multi-phase investigation provides sufficient and timely subsurface information for each stage of design while limiting the risk and cost of unnecessary explorations. Data collection. The data collection stage involves collecting all available information pertaining to the site and the proposed structure. Subsurface information targeted for data collection includes site geology and any existing geotechnical information. Site geology refers to the physiography, surfical geology, and bedrock geology of the site. There are typically many sources of existing data, including geologic and topographic maps, geologic reports, computer databases, aerial photos, borings at nearby sites, and previous construction records. Note that maps from different dates can be used to determine topographic changes over time. Data collection goals. During the data collection stage, you should determine, first, the type of structure. Second, preliminary location of piers and abutments. Third, foundation loads and special design events. Fourth, allowable differential settlement, lateral deformations, and performance criteria. And fifth, any special features and requirements. Geologic and geotechnical data. The geologic and geotechnical data obtained from the data collection study are used to establish anticipated site conditions and feasibility of various foundation types. It's also used to make preliminary cost estimates, identify potential problems, and to plan the more detailed phases of site exploration. Following the data collection study, the geotechnical engineer is better prepared for the field reconnaissance stage of the investigation. Field reconnaissance. Field reconnaissance involves visiting the site to determine surface features that may affect construction. Geological hazards are also identified in this stage. Surface features. 
Site visits might provide evidence of surface features that will affect construction. This might include restrictions on points of entry and positioning of construction equipment, existence of surface and subsurface utilities, locations of existing structures on the site, locations of trees and other vegetation, and limitations concerning their removal or damage, possibility of subsurface contamination such as abandoned underground petroleum tanks, presence of surface water, restrictions on noise and or other environmental conditions. Geologic hazards. Ground geologic surveys may also be conducted as part of a reconnaissance study at sites where geologic hazards such as landslides exist. In these surveys, engineering geologists record observations on topography landforms, soil, and rock conditions, as well as groundwater conditions. Where bedrock is exposed in surface outcrops or excavations, field mapping can be an essential step to obtaining information about rock mass characteristics relevant to design and construction of rock socketed shafts. A qualified engineering geologist or geotechnical engineer can make and record observations and measurements on rock exposures that may complement the information obtained from borings and core sampling. Rock type, hardness, composition, degree of weathering, orientation, and characteristics of discontinuities and other features of a rock mass may be readily assessed in outcrops or road cuts. Photography of the rock mass can aid engineers and contractors in evaluating rock mass characteristics or potential problems associated with a particular rock unit. Overall foundation design. After completing the data collection study and field reconnaissance, the geotechnical engineer should be able to identify the overall foundation design and construction requirements of the project. Feasible foundation types should be determined at this stage and drilled shafts selected for further investigation. The types of geotechnical data needed and potential methods available to obtain the needed data are identified and used to plan the subsequent phases of the investigation. Detailed Site Exploration The detailed site exploration stage provides the site-specific information needed for design and construction of drilled shafts. It is assumed that the structural engineer has developed a preliminary plan at this stage. Methods include geophysical surveys, drilling and sampling, field testing, and laboratory testing. For major structures, it's common practice to divide the field exploration into two phases. Initially, borings performed at a few select locations and geophysical tests are used to establish a preliminary subsurface profile. The results are used to identify key soil and rock strata. Before we continue, be sure and hit the like button and subscribe to receive more drilled shaft guides. We appreciate the support. Preliminary planning. The geotechnical engineer uses the preliminary plan to establish the locations of geophysical surveys along with the locations, depths, type, and number of borings to be performed. In cases where the investigation is being done for a building, the designer should provide the layout and footprint of the building, plans, and any column and wall loads. Retaining wall or slope stabilization projects require preliminary plans showing the location of drilled shaft walls in plain view and cross-section, including elevations. Geophysical methods. Geophysical methods, in conjunction with borings, can provide useful information about the stratigraphy and properties of subsurface materials. The most frequently applied geophysical methods for drilled shaft foundation sites are seismic refraction and electrical resistivity. Depth, space, and frequency of borings. A minimum of one boring per substructure, pier or abutment, at bridge sites where the width of the substructure is 100 feet or less, and at least two borings at substructures over 100 feet wide. These recommendations are the minimum for foundations in general, and drilled shafts may require additional borings. Geotechnical Design Report A geotechnical design report, also called a foundation report, typically provides an assessment of existing subsurface conditions at the project site. It presents geotechnical analysis and provides appropriate recommendations 
for design and construction of drilled shaft foundations for the bridge, retaining wall, or other facility. The report should always make a clear distinction between information which is factual and information which is qualified or interpretive. Geotechnical Investigation Report In addition to an overview of the project, the Geotechnical Investigation Report includes detailed information about site characterization, including general site conditions, such as geology, topography, drainage, and ground cover, specific methods used for site exploration, plans showing locations of all borings, test pits, and in situ test holes, soil and rock classification systems used, final logs of all borings and test pits, water level readings and other groundwater data collected, rock core photographs, results of geophysical testing, geologic mapping data sheets, and summary plots. Differing site conditions. A common source of contractor claims on drilled shaft construction projects is for differing site conditions, or DSC. The complete disclosure of all available subsurface information in the contract documents, which is required by law, is an important factor in both preventing contractor claims and in obtaining fair bids for the work to be performed. Summary. Site characterization is a critical element of the overall process of drill shaft design and construction. All of the soil and rock properties used to design drill shafts, as well as all information related to the subsurface conditions used to select appropriate construction methods, must be obtained through the site characterization study. Inadequate site characterization can lead to uneconomical designs construction disputes, and claims and foundations that fail to meet performance expectations. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Peer Research. Check out peerresearch.com to view their entire lineup of products, including the Quick Lock Peer Boot Spacer, which is designed to support a reinforcing steel cage within a drilled shaft with a concrete cover requirement. They're also great for supporting reinforcing steel over waterproofing in mat foundations and providing vertical support of slurry walls. Well, that's all we have for now, and be sure and subscribe so you'll be notified whenever we release a new video guide.